The Canadian tortillere is a hearty, savory, mixed meat pie full of herbs and warm spices held together with mashed potatoes and enveloped in a buttery, flaky, double crust pie crust. What could be more satisfying about flavor and indulgence? The holidays are full of indulgent foods, particularly sweets, with so many wonderful traditional holiday savory dishes. Today I'm excited to share my version of the Canadian tortillere, the Christmas meat pie. It is thought to have originated in Quebec, Canada. Versions of this pie are eaten all over Canada, particularly in the East and in New England of the United States. For my tortillere ingredients you'll need, for the pie crust we have all-purpose flour, salt, butter, shortening, water, and an egg to brush over the dough. For the herbed meat filling we have potatoes, ground pork, ground beef, the herbs, savory, rosemary, marjoram, thyme, sage, the spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, black pepper. You'll also need a little butter and oil and beef stock or broth. We'll begin by preparing the pie crust. You want to place one cup of water with ice in a measuring cup place that in the fridge. You want to dice up 113 grams, which is a half a cup of butter, put that in the fridge, and then you're going to dice up 100 grams, which is a half a cup of shortening or lard, and place that in the fridge. We want these ingredients to be very, very cold when we add them to the dry ingredients because this is what will make our pie crust fluffy and flaky. You could, of course, use store-bought pie crust and skip this step all together, or you can make the pie crust up to a week ahead of time and store it in the fridge. In a large bowl, we're going to add 360 grams, which is three cups of all-purpose flour. And then to that, we're going to add six grams, which is one teaspoon of salt. Let's give this just a quick stir. So you can use a food processor or the way I'm doing it, just the way my grandmother did it and then my mom does make her pie crust is use a pastry cutter. So now we want to add that really cold butter that we diced to put in the refrigerator. And we're going to add the cold shortening that we diced and put in the refrigerator. And we're just going to cut it up the fat into the flour until we have small pea size pieces of flour and fat. You can use all butter or all shortening in this recipe. And sometimes I do one or the other, but since we're doing a double pie crust with a very heavy rich meat, I like to use both. Butter produces a very flaky pie crust. It gives the pie crust flavor adds a little bit of saltiness to it if you're using salted butter. And it browns it, makes it just a little bit darker in the oven. Shortening tenderizes the pie crust, it also makes it flaky. I think the combination of both just makes it that much more indulgent. My flour is in nice little chunks, looks like little peas. So now it's time to add the liquid, and I like to use water in my pie crust, it's what my grandmother did and what my mom did. And so since we have our super cold water that's been sitting in the fridge with ice, I'm gonna measure out and I'm gonna use a strainer so that my ice doesn't get into my water and then we're going to pour in a half a cup of water into our dough just like so and then take a fork and start mashing the flour mixture against the side of the edge of the bowl so that we can try to get that water mixed in well you can see the pie dough is starting to come together. We want to add just enough water until our pie dough is moistened and that we don't really have any flour left that's loose in the bowl. Then you just want to add about a tablespoon of water at a time as needed. And then before I finish, I always like to take my hands in here and actually touch the dough, see how wet, how moist it is. I can tell I've got a blob of wet there, so that tells me it needs to be mixed up a little bit more. All right, as you can see, I have plenty of liquid in here. My pie dough has come together. I've had nice cohesive dough. Since we're gonna be making a double crust pie, we wanna go ahead and divide this dough in half. You can eyeball it or you can weigh it, it's up to you. Place each ball, each half, on a sheet of plastic wrap. Cover it up with plastic. So now we're gonna place both of these halves in the refrigerator for at least one hour up to a week until we're ready to use them. To make the mashed potato filling, you're going to need 650 grams of potatoes, and that's about a pound and a half. And then to the potatoes, you want to peel them, and then you want to dice them into large chunks, as you see me doing here. And then place them in a medium saucepan. We're gonna cover the potatoes with cold water, because cold water 
allows your potatoes to cook evenly. If it's hot water, then the outside of the potatoes will cook quicker than the inside potatoes. We're gonna add half of a tablespoon to season the water. Adding salt to the water seasons the potatoes and so it allows you to put less salt in the potatoes once um, your potatoes have been cooked. They'll absorb the salt while they're cooking in the water. Go ahead and turn your heat on to high heat until the water boils. When your water comes to a boil, turn the heat down to simmer. You'll allow the potatoes to cook for at least 10 minutes. You might need 12 minutes. Take a large potato, if you could find one, and a knife and cut through the potato. If it cuts through smoothly, just like that one did, then it's tender and that means the potatoes are cooked and done. Drain the potatoes in a colander over the sink. Return the potatoes back to the hot saucepan because the hot saucepan will absorb any water that may be remaining in the potatoes. We do want these potatoes relatively dry. Go ahead and add a half a teaspoon of salt and mash the potatoes. If you have a potato masher or whatever it is that you use to mash potatoes. Now just place your potatoes aside to cool. To make the herbed meat filling, we're gonna add a tablespoon of oil to a large skillet and one tablespoon of oil. I like to use both butter and oil because the butter adds flavor and the oil helps to maintain moisture. And then turn your skillet on medium high heat. Once your butter is melted, to make sure you swirl the fat around the pan. And my butter is sizzling right now, but if you want to ensure that your oil is hot enough, just stick a piece of onion in there. I can see the liquid around the onion sizzling and the onion is starting to move around in the pan. That tells us our pan is hot enough. So now we want to add one small onion, finely diced here. We're going to allow the onion to cook for a couple of minutes until it has become translucent and it's a little soft. Now we're going to add four cloves of garlic that I have minced. And we're going to let the garlic cook for just a minute because we don't want it to burn at the bottom of the skillet. We just want it to burn off some of that bitter garlic flavoring. We're going to add in one pound of ground pork and one pound of ground beef. Pork is traditional meat in this dish in Canada. However, it's not uncommon to have a mix of meats like the beef or even wild game. So if you're someone who enjoys hunting deer or elk, this would be a great way to use up your ground elk or ground deer meat. And then just break up the meat into the onion. While the meat is still cooking, let's go ahead and add all of our spices so our spices have time to meld in uh, with the flavors of the meat and the onion and garlic. So the spices I chose for this recipe, this is a French Canadian recipe. So I chose warm spices for the holidays, but then I also chose herbs that are traditional of French cuisine because this is a combination of French and uh, Canadian. So we're gonna start with, and I'm, all of the herbs have two grams, which is two teaspoons. We're gonna start with savory, very traditional of French cuisine. Then we're gonna go with rosemary, dried marjoram, and all these herbs are dried. Now we have thyme, and then we're going with rubbed sage. To me, this is very holiday, very seasonal herb. So I love sage in all of my fall and winter dishes. Now it's time for the warm spices. We're gonna add three teaspoons of cinnamon. We have a half a gram, which is a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, half a teaspoon and a half a gram of allspice. Gotta have black pepper, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Before you start cooking your meat, it's best to have all your spices ready to go. Now for purposes of making this, for you, I showed you all the spices individually, but normally when I make a dish like this, I measure out all of my spices in one small bowl, and then just have it near my dish, so when I'm ready to add all the spices, they're all there ready to go. We're gonna let this cook for about five minutes, and then we're gonna add our broth. Now we're gonna add one cup of beef broth or stock, I'm using stock, uh, then stir everything together. We're gonna reduce the heat to sort of medium, low medium, and we're gonna allow the mixture to simmer for 30 minutes until most of the liquid has evaporated. Keep your pan uncovered and make sure that it's sizzling in the pan. When I cook raw meat, once my meat has been cooked, I will generally switch out utensils and use a cleaner utensil just because the utensil is no longer dirty that probably didn't get cooked like the meat in the skillet did. Now you wanna test the mixture. So take a little bite, uh, any more spice if you want, or salt. So now we're gonna add in the potatoes. And the potatoes act as a binder to keep the meat from falling apart. When you go, when you slice it, stir the potatoes in with the meat. Notice our meat mixture is more of a paste, which is great because it's gonna hold up really well in our pie. 
You want to take another taste of your meat mixture with potatoes. Add a little bit more salt or seasoning as you choose. All right, go ahead and turn off your heat. And we're going to transfer the meat and scoop it into a bowl. We want the meat to cool before we add it to our pie crust. We're going to set our meat aside to cool. Let's assemble the pie. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Go ahead and remove at least one pie disc from the fridge. If your pie dough is a little soft, keep the other one in the fridge. If they're both pretty hard, you can go ahead and take them both out. And then we're going to lightly flour our work surface and unwrap one of the dough discs and roll it out. I'm gonna bake my pie in a nine and a half inch pie plate. I'm gonna flour your rolling pin and then just start rolling it out. We're gonna roll out our pie dough to 11 inches. We want a couple of inches beyond the size of our pie plate. We want edges to overhang so that we can create a decorative edge for our pie. I love being able to see the chunks of butter and the chunks of shortening. Okay, once your pie dough is rolled out, we're going to fold it into sort of a triangle. That way it makes it easy for us to transfer the dough to the pie plate. And your pie plate is left ungreased because there's plenty of fat in our dough here. Place the corner, the, the triangle in the center of your pie plate, and then you just want to open up your dough. And for the most part, you can get it nice and evenly in your pie. Okay, then just lift up the edges and press down to get the dough snugly against the plate. And for super long edges, you can just go back and trim them off like this. Good thing is this is not gonna be our top crust. So if you have any holes like right here, it's not quite as long as I want it to be, you can just patch it in there. Okay, and you should have a little bit of overhang all around your pie plate. Our meat filling has cooled some. It's still warm, it's just not hot. So now we're gonna add it to the pie. And as you scoop your meat in there, you kinda wanna pack it down just a bit. You want it to be nice and compact. And then just sort of smooth it out. Okay, just as we did with the first one. And then just start rolling it out. This one we want to be maybe a little bit prettier since it's our top one. We need to add a little egg wash to the pie edges from that first pie because we want to make sure that our dough seals and stays together while it's baking in the oven. So we're just going to beat one egg in a small bowl and I'm just going to go around the edges of the bottom layer of pie here. So we've got a little bit of glue on our pie edges here. Take your top crust and we're going to fold it into a triangle like we did with the bottom layer. Again, it's just an easy way to transfer our dough. Okay, half and then half again till we have a triangle. Then take your triangle point, place it in the middle of your pie, and then unfold. Okay, so you've got a lot of overhanging, so you could trim some of that off. If you like pie crust, you could bake these little pieces separately in the oven. Great little snack. Now we want to seal the dough edges, so I like to curl my pie crust with the edges underneath it. Just roll it under to the top of the pie plate. It'll create a nice thick edge. I love eating the nice thick layered edges here of a pie. Okay, now once you have your nice edges formed, you can do a couple things. You could take a fork and crimp the edges using the tines, or what I like to do is just take two fingers and one hand and my knuckle of the other hand and then just press my knuckle between the two fingers and just go around the pie, like so. We've got a nice decorative edge. Okay, so we need to be able to allow steam to escape from inside the pie. So if you have some cookie cutters, maybe before you actually put the top layer on, you can cut out shapes. I'm just gonna make little trees on mine. Just cut some little slits, like so. I'll just do maybe a few around. Since it is fall, trees are a good decor. The simplest thing to do would be to just make maybe two or three slits. So you could do one, two, three, and then be done with it. Okay, so now we're just gonna go back and brush the dough with this egg wash. The egg wash will give the, the pie a dark, pretty golden color. You wanna brush the edges, the top and inside of it. We're gonna place the pie in the oven and bake for 15 minutes. Reduce the heat now to 375 
It baked for 40 minutes or until golden brown and the crust is baked through. Check it out, our pie is hot out of the oven. It looks beautiful with that golden brown top. With our pie hot, you can serve it now or you can let it cool a bit. Notice how it's nice and golden brown, the crust. I love that thick layer, a pretty crust on the outside. You can see little remnants of our trees in there. It just makes a nice design more than anything. This pie keeps well for several days in the fridge, and the pie actually tastes better the second day as the extra time allows the spices to melt and absorb into the meat, giving the dish a stronger flavor. Okay, let's cut into our pie and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, look as it comes out of there. Wow. Well, it looks like I left quite a bit in there, didn't I? If you let the pie cool a little, it'll be easier to cut and remove. I let the pie cool a little bit so we can get a better slice out of here so that it doesn't fall apart so easily. So that's something to think about. If you wanna have a pretty slice, then wait till the pie cools and then you can cut it. So notice how easily it comes out of there. Of course, we have a little bit of space, it makes a difference too. All right, so notice the, how thick that pie is. It looks good and thick. The crust is flaky thanks to the butter and the shortening combination. You've got the pretty golden color on top thanks to the egg wash. I love the thick crust edges here, and it's really tasty too when you think about that butter and shortening together. The decorative center, I love the trees. It sort of illustrates the season. Clearly, meat is the highlighted visual here. You can see spots of potatoes throughout. I can certainly smell the herbs and the warm spices. If you're a hardcore carnivore, this recipe should hit the spot for you. While the Canadian tortillere is commonly eaten during the Réveillon of Christmas, the evening before, on Christmas Day or New Year's Day, it's very much enjoyed year round. We very much enjoy this meat pie. If you're looking for a different dish during the holidays, you might give this one a try. Serve it with a nice super salad and homemade yeast rolls to round out a very merry holiday meal. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, go back the world. A plus, ciao.